Uh, thank you, Jason, for the introduction. And I am honored, actually, to be here today and be a part of the distinguished panel that we have with all of you experts in the room and really bring a worker perspective on this important topic. Um, we are grateful to the administration for uh, showing us how nuclear power fits into the transition to cleaner energy. So uh, this, um, this summit is incredibly important in terms of um, elevating the issues and really showing the public why nuclear energy matters and is vital to our energy future. And we in the labor movement have been strong advocates and have been beating the drum for some time about um, you know, an energy policy in this country that invests in our nation's future and uh, creating jobs and addressing the threats of climate change. Um, and it's clear that the U.S. will need to use a wide range of energy sources and we believe maintaining a healthy, robust nuclear power sector is absolutely essential and from fuel to manufacturing to construction, uh, disposal, and of course remaining at the cutting edge of research and engineering. And the United States has the talent and the technology to be successful. We have the experience, and at least for the time being, the supply base. And we would say from the labor movement's perspective, the talent component of this is right up our alley. And our building trades unions invest a billion dollars a year in privately funded training. Not a lot of people know that. Um, and this is, we know, DOL's Apprenticeship Week. We're very excited about that. And I think yesterday was actually Women in Apprenticeship. Um, so we're thrilled to be seeing attention paid to a model that we know works, one that's pioneered by the labor movement. And if America gets its act together to finance and build a new fleet of nuclear power plants, American labor is poised and ready with a skilled and competitive workforce. But there are a number of challenges to making that happen. First, we should have no illusions that we can stay competitive by simply taking advantage of the developing and very large foreign market while the domestic market continues to wither. It won't work. It can't work. If we're not building new nuclear power units, the U.S. lead in technology and security will fade away. Commercial leadership is built upon actually making things, not just engineering them. And so we need to figure out how to finance and build new nuclear generation. Second, from labor's point of view, perhaps nothing seems as ripe for reform as the what we would say is the clearly failed experiment of electricity market deregulation. Deregulation does not deliver less expensive electricity. It doesn't deliver certainty for investors. And it's clear now that current market structures will not even ensure the survival of an important part of our existing nuclear fleet. And as a nation, we've got to decide quickly. How are we going to save at-risk nuclear generation? And as we see it, EPA didn't value existing nuclear in the clean power plan, and if too many existing mothball or plants are mothballed, the numbers underlying the clean power plan will have to be reevaluated. And of course, we have to think long and hard about the devastating effects of plant closings and the effect that's going to have on workers and their families and communities and local tax bases, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that. So build more nuclear power plants. That's, what's, that's what our main message today. Create family wage jobs and opportunities. Um, and then third is trade policy, of course. Um, we believe that trade and trade policy are an impediment to maintaining American leadership in nuclear power. And the roster of competitors in the nuclear power sector is growing. Already China sees itself, not the US, as the nation to beat. And why wouldn't it, right? 40% of global builds are in China, and they're working every day to build their supply chain. And if the same old trade patterns are repeated, um, you know, we'll see industry after industry, as it has in the past, leave the U.S., including uh, this one. So um, we should celebrate successes, of course, as well um, on exports. Curtis Wright just getting final approval for the AP 1000 coolant pump, proudly made by IBEW local uh, 1914 members. 
Um, there are so many other uh, items I'd like to mention. I'm out of time. But quickly, you know, policy improvements on licensing, uh, more nimble export approvals on components, uh, more international cooperation, investments in new technology, and that includes heavy public investment. And finally, dealing with storage. So I just want to say with confidence the American labor movement is here. We're a partner. We want to work with anyone who wants to maintain the U.S.'s edge and global leadership in the nuclear industry. Thank you.